Thank you. Does it go restraining order on Alan Beardcock to Abby or on Abby to Beardcock? Which way does it go? All right. So on your note card. Write all this down. Yeah, all of it goes on your note card Whoa. under a section called basic trig identities. Under a section called basic trig identities, you need the following identities. The sine of x is the reciprocal of the cosecant, or one over cosecant of x. The cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine of x. The cosine of x is the reciprocal of secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Tangent is reciprocal of cotangent, cotangent is reciprocal of tangent. Also, the tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. You ready to move on? No. no. I'm kidding. I knew you wouldn't be ready yet. Yes, I'm recording this. Why, why are you staring at me like that? Because you're writing a restraining order against me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Now, why would you tell him that? I prepared him. Yeah. She's nice like that. Better. Three people responded to that. It's like... So, what we're going to be doing is manipulating trigonometric functions the entire chapter. So, when you see a sine, sometimes you'll have to change it into 1 over cosecant. When you see a cosecant, most of the time you're going to change it into 1 over sine. Cosine, every once in a while, you go 1 over secant. Most of the time, you'll change secant into 1 over cosine. Very rarely will you use tangent equals 1 over cotangent and cotangent equals 1 over tangent. Those are pretty rare. Most of the time, you'll be changing tangent into sine over cosine. Ross, and cotangent into cosine over sine. Okay? Most of the time you'll be doing this, this one, and this one. Okay? Yeah. Because we want to put things in terms of sines and cosines most of the time. Every once in a while we go away from that, but most of the time put them into terms of sines and cosines. Okay, those are the basic trig identities. Oh now we have the Pythagorean identities. <laughs> we have three Pythagorean identities. And then, like the top one, we could write three different ways. The middle one, we can write three different ways. And the bottom one, we can write three different ways. So we'll, we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> no, I like how you worry about that. I'm actually getting it. What? I, I just got some. You weren't worried about it. I have the day off. She's having a break. Stats, so I don't have to do anything. And I'm ready to come. Hey, Brian, you want to juggle a little bit? Nah. You're good. Does that help you out, Abby? Yeah. Now. There will be more stuff than this that we put onto the note card. Mm -hmm. This is just it for this, no. this no. partial section. Oh, so we got more today to write down? Uh, we'll wait till 
it might be even next week that we get to the rest of the milk cart stuff and the week after that so we're done for the lesson right no two bro i already asked that question does this count as one i think so the first lesson is four problems, so oh, it'll be fine. Must be a tough four problems then. Do they each have twenty parts? No, it's not that bad. See, when you say that, the that kindler, happens. gentler Mister Birschbach will come out in this first section. After that, maybe not. But okay, here we go. So. What we're doing is manipulating trig functions into trig functions with sines and cosines and then simplifying them accordingly. So how do we write cosecant in terms of sines and cosines? Cosecant under our basic trig functions is 1 over sine of x. Cotangent is what over what? Cosine of x over sine of x. What do you call a fraction with fractions in it? A complex fraction. Way to go. Way to go. Complex fraction. A way to get rid of a complex fraction is to multiply by the denominator of the denominator. Multiply both the numerator and denominator by the denominator of the denominator. So, what's the denominator of the denominator? Sine of x. So, we're going to multiply this by sine of x and this by sine of x. When we multiply by sine of x, this is really sine of x over 1. So, sine of x and sine of x cancel. So 1 over 1 is 1 in the numerator. Sine of x and sine of x cancel. Cosine of x over 1 is cosine of x. Now, we'll leave it like that because we're told to put it in terms of sines and cosines. If we want to further simplify, what could we simplify that into? Secant of x. Because on your basic trig identities, you see 1 over cosine is equal to secant. But we will leave it like this because we will be told to learn, leave these in terms of sines and cosines. Okay, was that so bad? No. Okay, I have cosine over secant, sine over cosecant. Well, if I want to turn things that aren't already in sines and cosines into sines and cosines, I already have a cosine of x on the top. I'll leave it as cosine of x on the top. But on the bottom, what's 1 over secant? 1 over cosine of x. My second one is sine of x over secant, cosecant of x. So the numerator is sine of x. What's the denominator going to be? 1 over sine of x. Do I have a complex fraction here? Yes. I don't need two sets of fractions. I need just a fraction within a fraction. Okay, both numerator and denominator don't have to be fractions to be complex fractions. So we've got a complex fraction going on. So what am I going to multiply my denominator and numerator by? Cosine of x here. And here, sine of x. So these cancel to be 1 in the denominator. So what does the numerator cancel to be? Cosine of x times cosine of x, which is cosine squared of x. Okay, what happens to our denominator in the second one? Cancels. So we have sine times sine, which is sine squared of x. You said cosine. Cosine squared of x. <laughs> okay, what's cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x from your note card? One, because that's on your, one of your Pythagorean identities. So it is just one. That is the answer. This whole gobbledygook cancels just to be one. Gobbledygook. 
Okay. Yes. You have to show your work. You can't just say, oh, that's one. It magically appeared. One. Okay. Now, the next one is it can be done a couple different ways. But we're supposed to turn these into sines and cosines. So, let's do it. No, I'm not going to do it the easy way. So, cosine squared just stays as cosine squared. What does cotangent squared become? Co cosine squared over sine squared because if it's co if it's one cotangent it's cosine over sine so if it's cotangent squared it's cosine squared over sine squared hey look i have a complex fraction how do i get rid of my complex fraction multiply by the denominator of the denominator sine squared of x sine squared of x on the top and the bottom that cancels that out so I have 1 over cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Which, when you add and subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. Do I have a common denominator? Yeah, so I have 1 minus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Now, you know how when we went through the Pythagorean identities, I said there were three different ways to write each of them. Okay, let me take you through this now. Let's take our sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals one Pythagorean identity. Is there a way to write this one in this format? What would I do to each side? Subtract. Uh, uh, sine squared of x. So if we subtract, we get cosine squared of x equals 1 minus sine squared of x. Do you see where we got that from? We just subtracted from each side. So we take our initial Pythagorean identity, and all we did was subtracted sine squared of x to get this. Now over here, I can replace one minus sine squared of x with cosine squared of x. All of a sudden we got cosine squared of x over cosine squared of x, which is one. Now, will everything just turn out to be one like these last two problems? No, they will not. So just don't, put ones down for all four answers. Because trust me, they're not all four of them ones. I don't know if any of them are. Page 165, 7 through 10 all is your first assignment. Write out the problem the way it appears in the book and get it in terms of sines and cosines and simplify where you can. Now, where to end, sometimes you don't know. It's all right. We are just practicing basically with this. It's, I take a completion grade, not a right or wrong grade with this.